We thank you so much. We're going to receive our preacher of the day. Uh, Evangelist Chris Ndikumana. Evangelist Chris Ndikumana. Uh, for me. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I don't I didn't know how tall he is. I thought it was like a poster Poline. That's all my mind behind. So I was shocked. Thank you for your help as well. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't know him, let's say directly or physically. I never met him like that. I, I just heard about him. What if? I heard about him from trustworthy people. Because I trust those people <laughs> and I trust him through those people. I know his ministry touching many, many beyond limitations. And what I heard about him what I heard about him, he had seen like I do. So if somebody had seen, he's my friend, wherever I I need. So tonight will be the first preacher. And I'm sure he's going to bless us. He's touching nations beyond just limitations. Proud of you, my brother. Save the Lord. The microphone is yours. Come in. Come out. Hallelujah! 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 Wow! I'll speak in Kirundi. Uh, I saw there is a big number of francophones. So I'll be inserting a little bit of French. But I'll use Kirundi mainly, and I know you will understand me. May I see the people that follow Kanguka? Those who listen to Kanguka, raise your hands. Hallelujah! Amen! Hallelujah! Amen! Wow! You may be seated. Amen. Apostle Murakoze. Thank you so much, Apostle. I want to thank the leaders of this church. They are still uh, greeting the people, so I'll wait for them. I want to thank you. The leaders, the leaders of this church for inviting me and I know it's the plan of God. You listen to the voice of God. I'm not here by accident. There is a plan that the Lord has. Everybody who came here, those who are outside, those who are inside, this message belongs to you. Hallelujah. It is yours. There is something that God wants to do tonight. I'm giving you my greetings from Burundi. They greet you. 
I came from Bujumbura and it was very hot just like here. So I want to put in some more fire. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As I was praying in the morning, I felt like there is going to be fire. There is fire that is going to come. Amen. Dimanche, je ne Dimanche, déjà je ne on Sunday, I couldn't speak. I prayed and I say, I will be Alleluia. in Kigali no matter what. So, so the Lord, Lord enabled me to be here. I want to praise God. God, I thank you for this special moment. I'm humbled before you. I want to be your instrument. May you speak. Whoever came here, Uramuz. you know them. May I open my lips, but the word be yours. We are waiting to hear from you. I take the authority over every power of darkness. Whatever he prepared, or what you prepared, may it be what we receive. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We will interpret the Yes, I We're going to read Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. 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 Yansize amavuta ngo mbwirize abagwaneza ubutumwa bwiza. Yantumye kuvura abafite imvune mu mitima no kumenyesha imbohe ko zibohowe. Yes. Okay. Asomye mongo wa mbere, sivyo? We just read verse 1 of Isaiah 61. Eh, okay, some buke buke. Ntunyarutse, shaka wabyumva neza, sivyo? Yes. Wo kuko uhoraho yagize yasize amavuta ngo ngiriki. The spirit of the Lord it's on me. Okay. No kumenyesha imbohe ko zibohowe. Aha. No guchingurira abari mu nzu y'imbohe. Mungo ka yiri. Verse 2 please. Aha. Mungo ka yiri. Verse 2. Verse 2. Kandi yanumye no kumenyesha abantu umwaka w'imbabazi z'uwiteka. Mhm. No munsi imana yacu izahorera minzigo no guhoza abarira bose. Haleluya. Amen. Be ready for verse 3. Be ready. We stop from there. Ya numye no gushiri rao iteje ko abisiyo ni barira. Dijo kuwa ha ikamba muchimbo chivu. Ikamba mura nizi. You know the crown? Ikamba niki? Who knows the crown? Crown, crown. Kuhone? Yes. Abarira? Those who weep. In the morning, the Lord showed me that there are many people here who are weeping. You are shouting hallelujah, but deep down in your heart, you are weeping because you are lacking something. Maybe you have some weakness. Maybe you are waiting for a child that you have not yet received. Maybe you have prayed and your promises are yet to come to come to pass. So you are weeping. I want to ask you to raise I'm not your asking you. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. But God knows you. Hallelujah. Amen. So you who came while weeping, you will go back while Hallelujah. smiling. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh-huh. Uh, no, Ashes, 
Where there was ashes, there is going to be a crown. Say, the oil of joy. The oil of joy. There is a joy that comes because of the news you have had. But there is another kind of joy that comes from the Lord. It is different than the happiness you get for a good news. The oil of joy. Morning. 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 Morning, morning, vigil, sorrow. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. A garment, a garment of praise. A garment of praise. Vêtement de louange, garment of praise. I always read many versions. They are t- telling us about a garment of praise. Praise ni kimu kinyagwanda. Amashimwe. Umwambaro wa mashimwe. Garment of praise. Umwambaro wa mashimwe mukishingo chiki. Muchimbo chumutima wihebje. Na ogeza nga. Hallelujah. We can even start from there. When they told me that this septennium was about supernatural empowerment by the Holy Spirit. By the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. I prayed and I asked God. God, they have told me what the topic is. Show me what to teach. I didn't hear anything when I first prayed. I prayed again. I heard a voice telling me, go and tell them your story. Amen. Go and tell them what I did in your life that made, that caused you, that caused you to leave the other place to be where you are today. Go and give them your testimony. So I'm here to give a testimony. Amen. Uh, many of you have heard of my testimony. I've already uh, said a lot about it. So I want to tell you about a garment of praise. A garment of praise. A garment of praise. Of praise. That is my topic tonight. The garment of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. The garment of praise. I want us to understand that praise. May we understand praise on in another level. May you understand that it's something that you wear. It is a garment that you must always wear. Every day. There are people who are here. And those who are following online. They have removed this garment because they are mourning. They are in tears. They are uh, uh, complaining. It's complaining. Complaining. Murmuring. Murmuring. Amen. We must praise instead of doing that. How can you praise or thank God every day? Psalm 34, verse 2. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. It shall not be in my mouth uh, only a few days, but every day, continually. 
It means continually, forever. Say continually. You can never praise God continually or every day unless you are empowered by the Holy Spirit. It is impossible. Today you might rejoice and praise the Lord and when you go in a, a different situation you start complaining. Has it happened to one of us? You rejoice because you have received the blessing and the problem comes then you start to complain. Has it happened to someone? If you're here, is, are you here? If you're not here, I'll go back to Burundi. Amen. It says forever, continually, every day. There is another verse I want us to read. Hebrews 13 verse 15. That is where my That is where my testimony starts from. Hebrews 13 verse 15. Nuko, tuje dutambiri mani teka ejitambo chishimwe tubi heshejwe na Yesu Amen. Amen. Through Jesus. Through Jesus. Let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice of praise. Say sacrifice. That is how it's called in Kirundi. A sacrifice is something that is precious to you. But that you must release. Hallelujah. Amen. How do you release it? Through Jesus. If you read the book of Hebrews, they speak of Jesus as the high priest. There were priests in the temple of God, but there were also the high priest. The priest will go to the holy place, but there was a place called the holy of holies. The holy of holies. No one could get in except the high priest. And the high priest would take sacrifices that he received from the priest. Today they tell you that in the New Testament there are no sacrifices anymore. Have you heard this? That there are no more sacrifices. Tell them to read Hebrews 13, 15. Because we are kings and priests. If we are priests, there is a sacrifice that we offer. You are looking me with angry faces for you don't want to give sacrifices. Uh, offering a sacrifice is not an option it's not a choice if you are a child of God you must offer sacrifices you do not do it uh, sometimes it says continually every day on Monday on Tuesday the whole month the whole year you offer sacrifices when you offer when you speak about a sacrifice today, they understand money but the sacrifice that they Bible talks about this is what the Bible says about a sacrifice. The fruit of lips is what the Bible says about a sacrifice. It is the fruit of lips. The fruit of the lips. The Burundians who are here. The fruit. 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 That you may give fruit. The fruit. God desires a fruit that comes from you. How is it called? How is it called? Praise. What is the name of the fruit? Praise. Amen. A sacrifice of praise. 
In other words, God desires that you may offer him a sacrifice from your lips which is called praise or thanksgiving. Where does it pass through? Through your lips. Through your mouth. You must open your mouth and confess and confess Izina the name Giman. of God. Imani sabi ni mitagoe. Omo ya juvis. Imani kuto sabi ni vioroche. God asks us for things that are not complicated. He is not asking you for blood. He is not asking you for your cow. He has asked you to open your mouth to release called praise. You have not understood this. For you to understand better, I will not live here until you understand. For you to understand, let us go to Psalms 50. If you don't understand from this verse, then I will pray for you. Psalms 50, verse 9. Psalms 50, verse 9. Soma. Sinzakura imfizi mu rugo rwawe cyangwa isekurume mu biraro byihene zawe Undavuga ninda ko ravuga Who is speaking Imana This is God Je ne prendrai pas de taureau dans ta maison ni de bouc dans tes bergeries I have no need of a bull from your store Ha komeza bongo icumi Verse 10 Kuko inyamaswa zose zo mwishyamba ari zanje Aha Zibirara shamba zo kumiso zigihumbi Aha ariko bwira abantu batanga inka cyangwa inyamaso cyangwa ibikoko hibimazi He's talking to people who offer animals in sacrifice Nashaka muve neza ngaha I want you to understand Imana ni kire wabuza kubitanga God is not stopping you from offering your animals Are you with me Imana ni kire wabuza kubitanga He is not uh, forbidding you Adi from offering but he wants to remind you that all the, all the bulls of the earth belong to him. Today we don't talk about bulls or cows. We speak about money. There are people who give their money in church or in the ministry of God and they will sit and say, God, you have seen that. So bless me. I have given to you. Today I'm here to tell you that. There is nothing you can give to God. Psalm 22 verse 1. 24 verse 1. Sorry. The whole world. And everything in it. Belongs to me. All the money. Belongs to God. All the banks. All of them, they belong to God. Why then do we offer for us to glorify God? But you are offering him part of what he gave you. We are giving him what already belongs to him. If you have five TVs, and I tell you, please lend me one of them. You must know that you are giving me what already belongs to me. So all the bulls be belong to God. Verse 11. Uh -huh. Verse 11. Nzi inyoni nibisiga byose byo kumisozi Arabizi arazizi zose Inyamaswa zo mwishamba nizanje Have you understood this Inyoni bazitanga mugabo nizanje He knows every bird and every insect Ariko ndugu ndugu bimpa Do you give them to me Nizanje They belong to me they are mine Verse 12 Verse 12 Aha Chumi na kabiri Verse 12 please Ia banjiri nzara sina kubgira kuko isi nibi yuzuye ali ibjanji. Ia wajewe uhoraho changa uiteka. If I the Lord were hungry nshonje if I were hungry I will not tell you that I'm hungry for I can kill any cow I desire and eat them. 
Let us come to 2022. Uh, God can, God can tell you, broke. even though I, I was broke, I would not ask you to borrow borrow me some money. I will go to BNR and collect every note I want. Because the whole world is in it. it All belongs to me. Amen. Why is he saying this? Verse 13. Mbese. Aho nari nyama na mafizi cyangwa se nanywa maraso yihene Are you following me They would kill a bull and bring the blood and give it to the priest and the priest, and the priest will take it to the place of the altar but God does not drink blood. What he desires is his glory alone. His glory alone. Hallelujah. Amen. You may ask yourself, what is God looking for? Who would know what to give to God? Who wants to know what to give to God? I told you that God has everything. All the vehicles outside there, they are his. All your houses are his. They are for God. So everything that you possess, everything that you give, it's just to glorify you. But there is one thing. Say one thing. You want two things. I said one thing and it's not even one thing. Where are the people from from Congo? One thing that you can that God has God has done it in a way he cannot give it to himself. That thing that the Lord said it comes from you through your lips Uh, Amen. When we go to heaven, there will be no prayer. There will be no sacrifice. 24 hours. 24/7 praising 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 worshiping giving thanks giving thanks or praising it is not about what is done here if, as long as you have a mouth, as long as you have lips as long as you have a voice you are creating praise to give thanks which is the fruit that the Lord desires for you to give him from your lips. I can look at you and I, I don't know if you understand. In 2009, when I discovered this, I, re- I had a CD. Pastor Paddy. Pastor Paddy was the one that gifted me the CD. So I listened to the CD. That's the first day I discovered that there is one thing that desires that I have. Yes. Do you do not understand? If they told you today that you were going to meet the wealthiest man on earth, Elon Musk, I, okay, Elon Musk. Elon Musk okay. Yes. Okay. And you go to Hanyuma, meet him. Mushikira, and when you get uh, with him, go, you will just mention any amount you want. Any amount of money that you want, you want. He will give to you. Ariko, but there is something you must give him in advance a, a that he desires. Won't you get something? Won't you take a loan for it? For you to get that thing he desires. They are t- telling you about a human being. I'm, not, I'm not talking about a human being. But God, the creator of heaven and earth. The God who sees everywhere. Who knows everything. Who created you. He's telling you. There is something I am the Lord desires from you which is called praise verse 14 verse 14 
Sacrifice, thank offerings to God. Uh -huh. Sacrifice to the Burundians who are here not about dancing but sacrificing. It's not about dancing but sacrifice. 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 A sacrifice, a sacrifice is something that is precious to you. Why is it, is he calling a praise a sacrifice? Who can tell me why praise is becoming a sacrifice? You have been praying for years, looking for a job. You have been jobless. And you receive a phone call that tells you that you have been hired in the US. And they tell you the salary you're going to be And all the uh, advantages. And you, you hang up. What do you do after that? For five years, you've been jobless. You receive, you get a job that is going to, to pay you $5,000. You have been asking God to answer your prayer. This time you have your answer. What do you do? You pray, you thank him. You thank him. You thank him, right? So, in your thanksgiving, is there a sacrifice? Is there any effort? Oh, yeah. No. Why? Because you are in a moment of joy. You are joyful and you want to say it. You want to say it. Yes. So, uh, you got the job. Fired. And they give you a letter to fire you. You go home, you cry. Will you thank him? You are so hypocrite. Okay, <laughs> So let's look at the person that is going to praise. You have been fired from your work. You don't know when to pay your rent, how to pay your rent. Anymore. But you know that you are a priest. And you are created to offer sacrifices. You kneel down and you start telling God, You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You allowed it to happen. Hallelujah. Yes. This person doing this has offered a sacrifice. Why? His body does not, uh, does not want to thank. His heart is full of sorrow. But he refuses to obey the flesh, But obeys the spirit. And say whatever the situation. By fire, by fire. I was created to praise. Say to praise. Continually. Yes. Because of the person doing this, this is a sacrifice. There are some thanksgiving that are not a sacrifice. Amen. Ten years waiting for a child. I know of a woman who has spent 24 years. She conceived at 51. And when, it comes, when she came to praise, uh, it's not a sacrifice. But there is another sacrifice when you don't feel like praising sacrifice thank offerings to God. Amen. When you do this, what happens? Verse 23. Uh -huh. Why are you cold? 
Are we together? If he was in West Africa, people would be shouting. And for you, you are so serious. Cultures are different, I can tell. If I was with people from Gabon, they would have received everything. But I'm wondering, are you understanding or not? It's not just Rwanda. Burundians are the same. I'm telling you my testimony. Things that happened to me. I was still single by the time. I became crazy. Pastor Padre knows. I ran and told God. Hey! Hey! I have discovered I know where it died from some of you don't know what went wrong I was in the right way the way of salvation I was not into sin I was not into fornication I was serving God but I would make two steps forward and three steps back. I would not go forward. I would give. But everything was still closed. But in 2009, when God showed me that it is true, you thank me, but from your lips, there are thanksgiving and there are complaints. These two cannot live together. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the supernatural empowerment, if you are clothed in the supernatural empowerment, the capacity of the Holy Spirit can work, cannot work in a person who has both praise and complaints. May praise continually come from your lips. So the day I discovered this, the day I understood this, when I realized I was the one locking my blessing, I said, Lord, when is this going to happen? Why, Lord, why? Until when shall I stay in the same situation? What have I done wrong? I was arguing with God every time. But I did not know that complaining opens the door to Satan to come in your life. I did not know that when you're praising, you live in a life of thanksgiving, you open doors to the angels to come in in your life. Amen. 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 I, no one was as much. Uh, I know many of you are just like me at the time. The day I understood this, I said, God, thank you. I'm going to confess your name. And I mentioned all the names of God. Say what God is. There is a difference between saying what God is and thanking him for what he gave you. Amen. Amen. There is thanking God. Say, God, I thank you for you gave me a wife. I thank you for you gave me a good husband. As mommy said it, she said my sweet heart. I thank you for my sweet heart. I thank you for my children. I thank you for my grandchildren. I thank you for the house you gave me. Thank you for the cars. I thank you for the health. Hallelujah. Amen. These are thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yes. But there is a difference between worship 
Ay, ay, ay. And thanksgiving. Worship. Worship. Is different no from giving thanks. Because, worship, because by worship, you do not look at what you have. You do not look at you. You look at God. You fix your eyes on him and tell him that even though I have nothing, even though I don't have a husband, even though I don't have a house, even though I don't have a house, I have a house. 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 And open the window. Open the window. And look at the stars. Say, Lord, you are my Lord. Look at the stars. You created. There, I will lay on the floor on a small uh, mattress. I would spend the night at my workplace. Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Paddy knows the place I would I used to sleep. I would, I would spend the night there because I was unable to pay the rent for my house. So I would spend the night in the prayer room on a very small mattress. The following day, I was not sure if I would get food. And I wake up in the morning. I say, Lord, no, I am starving. You are still a God. No one is like you. You are the creator of heaven and earth. On the third day, as I was doing this, I had a vision. I saw a demon. As I was screaming, you are holy. It was running away. It was running away. And I said, Lord, what, what just fled? What, uh, why did he flee? And a voice told me, he fled me. He fled my presence. He fled my presence. Psalm 22, verse 3. 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 Psalm but you are holy, enthroned in the praises of enthroned. Israel. Enthroned. We Where I was seated, that's not a throne. Because I will go back home. But a throne is a permanent position. Where you sit and you take the decision and you take the authority. So praise it. When you are praising you God, are building you are building the throne of God. Amen. You are building the throne of God. You are calling God to come and sit and reign and be enthroned. I heard that. And I told God. I was alone. I said, starting today. Starting today. This room. Is your sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to be enthroned. I don't want you to come and then go. I want you to dwell. I want you to dwell. I want you to dwell. John 4. Verse 23 and 24. John 4. 23 and 24. Jesus was talking to the Samaritan. And said, They take it as Those who worship in truth and God is calling for worshipers to worship Him in truth and spirit. Okay. Yet a time is coming uh -huh. and has now come uh -huh. when the true worshipers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Hallelujah. Amen. Six. Six. Amen. To seek. 
Niya, niya hindu, jambo, niryo, uh, that's the word that changed my life. I read it in Kirundi and in English. I realized that God is seeking. Is seeking. He's seeking. Worshippers. Worshippers. Who worship him in spirit no and in truth. And I say to God, God, if you are seeking, at least you have someone in Burundi. I am the person in Burundi. Starting today, this room, this house I'm standing in, there is no word of complaints that will come from my mouth. Amen. And I took my paper and I started to write in capital letters. And I said, this, Chirazira. it is forbidden to complain. It is, it is forbidden to, com it is forbidden to complain in this house. I opened the door and I said, Satan, have you seen this? You better go. Because this is the holy of God. Here is the sanctuary, the sanctuary. Amen. I started to make more time to pray and worship. Until today, my prayer time, it has more time to worship. To worship. I spend more time in worship than any other request. It is true, I intercede, pray for people, family, nations. But the most time I priority use it, my priority of my prayer is to call upon the presence of God to open the door for angels Hallelujah. to come in. Hallelujah. Amen. Your weapon is into your lips. Hallelujah. Amen. After hearing these words, after hearing these words, your life will change. Let us go back to Psalm 50. I am a preacher and an evangelist. Psalms 50, verse 14. Uh -huh. Okay, verse 23. Psalm 50, verse 23. Verse 23. Uh -huh. The salvation of the Lord. There is version another version. That say on part B he says he paves a way for me to rescue them. If you want your God to come in your life you have the responsibility to pave a way in my house. It is written, it is forbidden to complain in this house. Because complaining is more dangerous than smoking. Because smoking kills the body. But complaining it takes you far from God. That's why you need to live a life of thanksgiving. A life of praise is a weapon. Amen. As I speak in this place, it is hard to understand when, if you do not understand authority, because they use the word enthroning, throne is not a place where you sit. Um, 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 people, a person who sits on the throne has the authority, the power, has an army. As I speak, let us be sincere. As I speak, the, the leader of the nation. If he came here, what would happen? 
He, he cannot just come like that. Kuza, there are people who precede him. Before he comes, there is a team of people that comes. And at least one person would stand to give him the place. And when he comes here, there is an army that will surround the building. You don't understand. Okay, take your house as an example. Let me say what you can understand. Your home, your house. Where you live, either in Gikondo, wherever you stay. You have a visit for, uh, from the president of the nation. He comes to your house. And your neighbor comes to you. you. They will not let him in. Because your house is is secure for the authority has come into your house. I hope you understand what I'm saying. I'm telling you the things things of here on earth for you to understand the things of heaven. Centurion. Centurion. He had a servant who was sick. And he, he went before Jesus. He was not allowed to receive a miracle. But Jesus was amazed. Because he accepted to go heal him. When this man said, I am a commander. I have an army. And when I tell one to go Again, on the gosh. left, they go on the left. Don't when I tell the other right, Adrat. they go on the Don't right. When I tell them to stand, they stand. Then you, you Jesus, now authority. you have the authority to the angels. You don't need to waste your time coming to heal my servant. Say a word. One word. My servant shall be healed. And Jesus told him, I've never seen such faith in the whole of Israel. I was telling you the things of the Nasanze, earth for Nasanze, you to understand the things of heaven. Nasanze, I discovered that the children of God, many of them do not understand the authority of God. That's why we complain. Turasenga. We pray. And when it doesn't happen as we pray, we complain. It's as if God has failed. When you understand the, the power and the sovereignty of God, when you understand that when he says the word, things happen, those who are not in existence, they come to existence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Those who were here told me the story. Some people were here in Kigali. Was any one of you here when he came? What happened? Were you moving around as you desired? There was, there was MTN, the only telecom company. They disconnected every network. And for you to, to make a movement, you would ask for permission. Because someone honorable had came into the nation. This is a human being. And today, George Bush, George Bush, if he came back to Rwanda, you would just hear it on the news that he came. Because he became an ordinary person. But then he had authority. And the God who created heaven and earth. If he came into your house, if he came into your house, everything that was dead will resurrect. Whatever was dead will be strange. What was refused will become possible. Because before you, nothing is impossible. But it requires you to invite him to come into your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Through Jesus, 
Let us offer thank offering which is the fruit of our lips which means the lips that confess the name of God. Is that really difficult? Is it difficult? I'm not hearing you. Why don't you do it then? You do it for a short while and then you stop. Why? A little faith. For you to do it continually, you need empowerment. Empowerment. Supernatural empowerment. The supernatural empowerment for you to stand and praise God in good and bad times. You would have grown in the A person who praises continually is the person who, was, who is spiritually mature. Some of you do not understand. A person who is mature in the spirit is the one that praises God in good times and in bad times. Because they know that the, their life is in the hands of God. It is God who has the authority over your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to Chronicles. Chronicles chapter 2. Second Chronicles. Chapter 20. Verse 7. Two Chronicles chapter 7. Verse 20. Verse 3. Yehoshaphati aratinya yiha atagushaku witeka. I don't want to read everything. You know the story. Jehoshaphat had an army of Jewish who were attacked by three kings. Amen. Amen. It's as if the nation was attacked from the north, south, and east. So Yehoshaphat was scared. He was scared. But he resolved. He resolved. He resolved there is an effort. There is overcoming the flesh. Overcoming the flesh. There are times you wake up with no desire to pray. It happens to all of us. Even to the greatest servants of God. You are clothed in the flesh. There are times you don't feel like praying. You don't feel like thanking God. But I have discovered a secret. A secret of knowing to resolve. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like David. In Psalm 104. He said, my soul. Praise the Lord. When everything, when it's not working, I wake up. And I tell my soul, my soul, listen to me. If David spoke to his soul, it means your soul can listen to you. You speak to it. You command. Tell it, wake up. Praise God. Open your lips. Wow. You need to resolve. Know how to resolve. Resolve. You understand the things of heaven. When I feel weak, I, I think about the things that Isaiah saw. He saw the secret of what was happening. He saw the angels. The seraphim. They started to look at each other. Everyone was shouting, You are holy. You are holy. The whole world is filled with your glory. I want to show you that the angels. It did not require Isaiah to see them for them to, to praise God. As I speak, 
They are worshipping. They are worshipping. Every time. So when I feel weak, I tell God, I say, I want to join with the angels. I want to open my mouth and speak of your authority. Speak of your goodness. Speak of your greatness. Speak of your creation. As I do this, there is something you are creating. So Jehoshaphat, he resolved to inquire of the Lord. And he proclaimed to fast for all Judah. Verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Verse 12. Mana yashu ni wa kwemera kubahana. Aha. Nambaraga dufite zarwanya izo ngabo nyinshi ziduteye. Kandi tubuze uko twagira ariko ni wowe duhanza amazi. Inde? Amen. Our eyes are abanu, on you. Abantu baje barira mu mitima yanyu. Those who came weeping in their hearts. Ninde uhanza amaso? Who are you fixing your eyes to? Uhanza amaso muganga. Are you fixing your eyes to the doctor? Are you fixing your eyes to the to the cash in your bank account? To your uncle? To the leaders? To who are you fixing your eyes? Then why do you complain? Complaining is an insult to the Lord. It's like you're telling him, Lord, you have failed. But those who know that either it works or not, whatever he desires, he can does. And there is nothing but that can come to me unless he allows. Amen. He fixed his eyes on God and said he could not uh, Overcome the three things. It was impossible for him to do it. You believe that it was, it was impossible by flesh. On, on the physical, on what the eyes could see, Jehoshaphat could not overcome them. Just like today, you might be in front of a situation where you, it is impossible, maybe you have a sickness that is incurable, or you are bound by sin, that you are unable, you have tried to, to get out of it, but it was impossible. But fixing your eyes, or remove your eyes, to your strength, Many young people like to tell me that I have tried to forsake masturbation. I told them how I wrote a letter to God and I, I stuck it to the wall. And I said, starting this day, I will never masturbate again. But I did it again. There are many who fall into sin because they have tried on their own. But whenever you pray, fix your eyes to the one who is able because the authority and the power of God, the authority of the Holy Spirit, when he comes in you, those things you are unable to do, the sickness that has been in you, the sin that has uh, refused to live your life. I don't know if you understand me. When you call on God in your life, God looks at the things that you did not even ask of. You, you know the story of the ten people who had leprosy. They screamed and Jesus came to heal them. He came to heal them. Jesus told them, go and show yourselves to the priests. On their way, they got healed. All of them. But only one came back. Amen. The other nine, they went to dance Domboroya Solo. 
one of them came back. The Bible says the way he was screaming, calling on Jesus, he came screaming and bowing before Jesus. Jesus, when he saw him, he said, this is not even, this one is not from Judah. And he asked the disciples, how many people did I heal? They say ten. Where are the other nine? Where are you, in other words? You who is complaining, where are you? There are those who are praising God. And God is asking where you are. That told the Samaritan woman that these are the worshippers he is seeking. If you understand this, you will say, God, I'm here. Please shoot me. I have come. This man who came to thank God, Jesus, what did Jesus tell him? Your faith has saved you. Because he was healed from leprosy, but because of praising, he received a bonus. He received what? Salvation. because he came back to Jesus when you are praising God God comes into your life and he looks at the things you are lacking there are many sins that will be broken into your life because of the life of God because of the life of praising inviting God into your house inviting God into your room God comes and he reigns and he with his army. Verse 20. 21. 21. Verse 21. 21. Uh huh. So. Nuko, Amaze Kuja, Inama Bagahimba Zubgiza, Goguchira, Nukakwe. Barangaje imbere ingabo bavuga bati ni muhimba z'uwiteka kuko imbabazi ze zihoraho iteka ryose Mwubise yavuze Do you understand what he said? After consulting the people he appointed men to sing madambo aba worshipers the worshipers he put them where why did he put them? Because Heading the army. Ningabo? Oh yeah. Part of the army. Who is in front? This, this, the, the image, the illustration. This, this is the illustration Alleluia. of your strength. The army, the army stands for your strength. It stands for the man you have. Alleluia. Amen. And if you understand these words, before your strength, you must put praise. Before everything else, you must put praise. He put praise before. I want you, verse 22, the words they say. Come back to 21. Come back to 21, please. Give to the Lord, for his love endures forever. Amen. Your goodness endures forever. Amen. These words, when you get home, you can read more. Second Chronicles, verse, uh, chapter 5. Solomon was dedicating the temple, they came carrying the ark with the singers and they started to sing and they said the same words for his love endures forever if you say this word there is a, a, 
a cloud that comes down because the singers will not see each other. The priests will not see each other. This cloud means the presence of God. The praises, the thanksgiving attract the presence of God. If you want God to dwell in your home, let your home become an altar of praise. If you want God to be in your life, have a life of praises. You will, need, you will not need to wait for God to do a miracle. God desires that thanksgiving and praise be part of your life continually. But he takes the power of the Holy Spirit for you to do it continually. Have you understood the words? His love endures. These words, I understood them in 20, 2009 and today, as I was praying, I told God, your goodness, your goodness, your goodness endures, forever. endures forever. This changed my life. Even when I'm not in my good place, it's okay. Your goodness endures forever. Your goodness endures forever. When you complain, you are telling God, your throne has forgotten me. When you complain, you are telling God, your throne, I saw it, but today, you have forsaken me. God desires that you may do it continually. His goodness endures either you have it or not. Either you let this dwell in your lips from your heart. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, no. Amen. You do not understand because this changes lives. I don't want to tell you about the life I had before. Do not be distracted. Do not be distracted. Look at me, please. Look at me. Look at me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you understand what I'm saying, you would be burning as I, as I am burning. Because my life before I understood this, it was a life of misery, a life of failure. Failure after failure. Which, which doctors? Yes, witchcraft. Witchcraft. I started to become weak. I started to, to run after prophets. They only ate my money. That's what they did. If you love to run after prophets, that, that is not the preaching of the day. But we are in the New Testament. Amen. Because in the Old Testament, God will speak through prophets alone. Whenever prophet Samuel would say a word, they would say amen. But in the New Testament, discern. Discern. You are called to discern. You have the Holy Spirit in you. You can discern. Whatever is true from what is not true. This is not my teaching. So I want to show you what I discovered here. Please catch these words and pray accordingly. For you to understand what it is, your love, your mercies endures forever. A part of the words that the Lord, the Lord delights in hearing, these are one of them. I don't want you to doubt about the goodness of God. Verse 22. Uh -huh. so, ma, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uiteka ashiraho abogu chira ijicho abamoni nabamoabu 
nabo ku misozi ku musozi Seyiri bari bateye ibuyuda baraneshwa kibazo kimwe one question ikibazo kimwe i have one question murumva ko imana yazanye god brought yazanye iki what did he bring yazanye iki what did he bring ha huh? What did he set? He set an ambush. And they fought each other. When did the Lord do it? As they began to sing. They are the spiritual enemies that will cling to you until you start. Amen. Amen. As they began to sing as they began bagitangira kuririmba It's like the angels were waiting for them to start singing Hallelujah Amen Ariko rero But when though it's sweet, I want to tell you the truth If you want to start tonight There is, I, I gave this sermon somewhere and people will come and tell me for two weeks I've been doing this and your things don't work. It took me months I would wake up as a crazy person telling God of his greatness. I would lock myself into the room take an artbook, go back, go ten years back and write it down. Write down the goodness of God. To, even in the smallest details. And one day, almost three months later, I started to feel well. Oh, instead of it becoming better, it became worse. I lost weight. And a demon whispered into my ears, you were dying. If you continue, you're going to die. And I told Satan, if I die, I'll go to heaven anyways. But you, you have been condemned. Let him not scare you that you are dying. Because dying is gain. Hey, your amen is forced. Dying is gain. If you are doubting, do not go before you see the okay, service Because you are going to be committed to the kingdom. That if you die, you're going to heaven. If you feel like there is something that will, will stop you from going to heaven, you need to put things in order. Dying is gain. You are scared to say amen. Why don't you say a louder amen? Okay. Let us conclude. Let me tell you a, a summary of everything I just said. It is good to invite God in your life. It is sweet to invite God in your life. Because I did it, did it for months without stopping. I said, no matter the situation, I'll continue to praise. And one day, those who followed my testimony on YouTube, one day I had a visitation, a special one. And God told me, stop. I am tired. Give me praise. You have, given, you have given me the fruit of the earth. I am satisfied. I am content. And I have come. And when God came, my life completely changed. My life got transformed spiritually. My spiritual life got transformed. My prayers changed. Every day that I had, people were calling me. I was about to be Yose! God paid off all of my debts. The person who paid my debts found me where I was. He found me at the place of worship. God took me all the way from the US. 
and he resigned from his work. God told me to go to Burundi. Go and I will tell you what to do when you get there. It, it took uh, many ways. I received the phone call. And they told me someone is looking for you. And he came where I was. I couldn't pay even the rent. I would rarely get food. And God erased it all. That same month, God gave me a wife. God changed my life completely. It didn't happen in one night. God was silent. He let me speak. He, he, he hid himself. He hid his face from me. I would praise him. And I felt like my praise is on the, on the roof. And I had a revelation. This is true. My lips are to praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And when God realized I had understood this and made it part of my life, He's going to give you time Hallelujah. for you to Hallelujah. make it a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Three things that are needed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You want to know about the three things? The main thing is not just confessing the word of God. Uh, in the Old Testament, Matthew 6, 21, he said, my people, they, pr they praise me with their but their hearts, you may confess the name Ariko, of God, wawe, but your heart being far from him. You understand this? Because as you go to praise and worship God, you might worship God just because you want him to give you a wife. You say all the names of God for you to get married. You worship him for you to get a job. Are you worshiping God or your job? Because you cannot mock God. He knows when you are truly worshiping him. And when you oh, no, try manipul, to manipulate Dieu. him, you can never manipulate Man, God. God does not only need your words, but also your heart. He looks at Hallelujah. the heart that speaks to him. Hallelujah. So the first thing that you need to have a life of worship sanctification. Sanctification. Our God is a holy God. He is a holy God. The Bible says, be perfect as your, be holy as your father is holy. You can never worship God when you are living a life of immorality. You can never worship God when you are living a life of sin. Hallelujah. Amen. The altar, Ijichaniro. Before you carry the altar, that altar, the altar was the sign of the cross of Jesus. The, the blood of the, of the lamb that they were offering is the uh, is symbol of the blood of Jesus. So if you have something that is accusing you, before you start the life of worship, just go before God and repent in the first place. Repent. I once met a person and we were uh, from Canada on the plane and he said I love Kanguka but I hate the Friday Kanguka because you keep on talking about things just leave that away. Tell us about Thanksgiving. Tell us about not complaining. 
but your words of talking about sin, leave it away. I, re- I, I came to realize she was living with a man she was not married to. And I told her, you are far from God. Put yourself in, the, in order with God. Because praise the sacrifice it was given by the high priest the high priest after he cleansed himself they will put a rope on his leg and as he get in there was a bell he had to for him to make a sign of his life because if he had seen he would die right there. You're so silent. God is holy. You have to be holy for you to approach his throne. There are things you do as you try to manipulate God for you to get a blessing. Repent. Be sanctified. Receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. If you have fallen into sin, repent. Number one, sanctification. Praise Sanctification. Number two, humility. Humility. Jacques 4, verse 6. James 4, 6. Humility. As you praise and worship God, when you are full of pride, your praise is weak. It's starting to become tough. You want me to lie to you? It is good that you become Uchia humble. What does you Uchia mean you mean? Being humble before Uchia God you, you say, God, I am unable. On my own. Without you, I have nothing. Without you, I am unable. Ugushima. Praising. Umunashima. A person who praises God is a person who has humility. There are people that I have seen personally who cannot easily say thank you. They will do uh, things to show you that they are grateful, but they can't say thank you. They can't say thank you. I'm done. I am concluding. I spoke about two things. Should I stop or give you the third one? Should I say it? Number three is very crucial. Number one is sanctification. Number two is humility. Number three is amazing. Let us read in Hebrews and we conclude from there. 13, 15. We read the sacrifice of praise. Many people, they, they stop from verse 15. Is he right? But the number three is on verse 16. Say 16. Kujira neza no kujira ubuntu ni mukabyibagirwe kuko ibitambo bisabityo ari byo binezeza imana amen hallelujah amen chakata tuni generosity generosity is Utanga. number 3 to give bila chifata ina mashimwe it joins with praise kuko ibitambo nkivyo because such sacrifice do not forget to do good because many people forget so. But as you praise God, if you wake up to worship him in the morning, every day, when you are stingy, stingy, yes, when you do not give, you are closing uh, you are weakening your praise because you have forgotten to insert the sacrifice that pleases God. 
the sacrifice that pleases God. So as you start to praise God, continually, remember to insert sanctification, to insert humility, to insert generosity. God will come down and dwell in your life and transform your life and rise what you said and rise what you said and straighten what was bent. Your life will never be the same again. Hallelujah. Amen. It is hard to understand this. Sanctification. Sanctification. Say it. What is number one? Number one is sanctification. Sanctification. Repentance. Number two. Humility. Number three. Generosity, giving. If you have these three things, wake up in the morning as David and tell your soul, my soul, wake up, praise the Lord. Your greatest weapon is your praise. Ah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Can we pray? Amen. Amen. Okay. Let us pray. Pray to God. If you feel like this word concerns you, wake up, uh, stand up and we pray together. For us to get the power, the supernatural empowerment that will enable you to have this kind of life of praising continually. That you may live a life of sanctification a life of humility, a life of generosity. From your lips, may you have the weapon of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Raise your hand and we pray. God, we thank you for, for the word you gave. He gave you it didn't come in vain. Everybody who came here, whoever is standing and raising their hand, you see them. May you give each one, starting today, may you empower them with the garment of praise. When they go to their homes, may they not go out without them wearing the garment of praise. Thank you for you are a good God. Thank you for your empowerment. I pray for every sick person in that place. Whoever came with a sickness, believe that you will not go back the same. When I came in here, I saw people who have internal disease. May you put your hands on your tummy. That I declare yes, victory. Jesus had the cross. You carried our cross. He said it is done. It is over. It is over. We were healed. I thank you for you have healed. Your hands ulcers. Arthritis. Arthritis. To the person who had a heart. I thank you for your hands. In the name of Jesus. May all the glory be unto you. Today and forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen.